write the overall balanced equation, determine the molecularity for each step, write the rate law. So for the first step, how do we write the overall balanced equation? By just adding these together. Again, notice how often this seems like algebra. It's legal to add two equations together, and it's legal to add chemical reactions together. Um, now, if you notice, these two species are the same. So we're going to have two of this. Um, and I'm already noticing that this chlorine will cancel with this chlorine. So I guess that's it for the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, I have two of these species left. and the chlorine gas. Or you could have written down the chlorine on the left and the chlorine on the right and then canceled them. And I think that's what uh, each of you got. So, so far, so good. So um, now we need to determine the molecularity of each step. What's the molecularity of this step? Unimolecular. Unimolecular. And what's how about uh, this one? Bimolecular. Bimolecular. Okay. I don't think we would apply that to this because this is the overall reaction and we don't really apply this because we're not saying, notice that a naive person would assume that what happened here is that one NO2Cl bumped into another NO2Cl. That's, the actual mechanism here is considerably more complicated than that. Write the rate law for each step. So let's write that down on paper. Good, except the rate law is an equation, so it would be probably better to say this equals rate, and that equals the rate. Okay, good. Not too many uh, problems here. So for the first step, the rate was equal to a constant times NO2Cl. This is the only thing participating in the first step. And for the second step, the rate was equal to a constant times the concentration of NO2Cl times the concentration of chlorine atoms. Uh, and again, the exponents here would be 1. Uh, I think uh, one of you might have forgotten the subscripts that we need here. Remember that these are, could be different. In fact, they almost certainly are, unless there's a huge coincidence. So I should call this 1 and 2. You need to use the same symbol for things that are the same, but you need to use different symbols for things that are different. These are probably different. I actually, I didn't follow my own advice in the previous example because these two rates are probably different. So I should call this, <coughs> maybe people won't always do this, but technically we should call this rate one and rate two because they're two completely different rates for two completely different steps. That also helps you distinguish that between the rate for the overall reaction, which I wouldn't give a subscript. 
Right, so those would be our um, rate mods. Questions? Wouldn't it be better to figure out the, the molecularity if we just write out the rate law first and then figure out the, because it's easier to do it then? Yeah. Um, if you did it first before you did what? Did the rate law first and then find out the molecularity? Uh, let's see. Well, I guess you can do it um, from either. Uh, but actually, we couldn't do the, uh, you mean before we did the, the, the overall equation? No, never mind. Yeah, so actually uh, we didn't really do very much here. If you look at the elementary steps, you can tell what the molecularity is and that basically the same information is in the rate law. So you can go from the elementary step to the rate law or you can go from the rate law to the elementary step. Um, which one you do first just depends on the information that you've been given. But we didn't know what this was until we saw the elementary steps. So if you had three NO2Cl plus Cl, is that a unum, I mean bimolecular or is that a different? Well, what was the example? If it was, if it was two NO2Cl plus chlorine. Then it would be bimolecular in the NO2Cl. It would be unimolecular in the chlorine, and it would be termolecular overall. So there would be an exponent of two on the NO2Cl. There would be an exponent of one on the Cl, and if you added them, you would get a three. Okay. Just, does, does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, that Yeah. Okay. So in fact, we can't write the rate law before we write the elementary reaction because the rate law is coming from the elementary reaction. In this case, they gave us those. Okay, um, so this is one of the steps. So suppose the question asks you, test whether this is a plausible mechanism. How can you test whether it's a plausible mechanism? One thing you should do always is add them together and make sure they match the overall equation. 